Well, we all know the pandemic forced most uh, Indiana students to learn from their laptops at the kitchen table instead of sitting at a desk in a classroom. It took a big toll on students, according to a new report from the Indiana Department of Education and National Center for Assessment, especially when it comes to math skills. That's not the only factor. The report suggests the pandemic caused a ripple effect for Hoosiers going to college. Financial aid filings down 5%. For more on the report and where we go from here, please to be joined on the show by Indiana Commission for Higher Education Commissioner Teresa Lovers and Indiana Secretary of Education uh, Commissioner, uh, Indiana Secretary of Education Katie Jenner. Welcome to you both, ladies. Thank you. Great Thank to you. be here. Well, let's talk about this. This is data. I mean, I think uh, the, the assumption is there was certainly a big impact on students from the pandemic. But as you look at the numbers, you look at the data, and Katie, I'll start with you, uh, s some real significant academic impact, especially when it comes to math. Yes, that's true. We, in Indiana, we're fortunate enough to have National Center for Assessment really take a deep dive into our Indiana data. And as you mentioned, we did have the greatest impact as a state in math, and that's trending across the country, and then a moderate impact in English language arts. Our, uh, actually, our, our racially and ethnically diverse students and low-income students, special ed, EL, we saw the, the biggest hit there with the growth of those, uh, the growth of those students, um, and we have a lot of work to do, and we as educators are certainly ready and eager to help our students. Yeah, and certainly the bottom line, the data really highlighting or really underscoring the importance of, uh, of in-person learning. Absolutely. I, I, cannot impact, I cannot emphasize that impact enough. And uh, it actually had um, a higher impact than we even anticipated. In-person learning is so essential for our students and we have to do everything we can to keep our students in the classroom in Indiana this school year, which is presenting yet another year of obstacles. Yep, and certainly the impact according to the data extends beyond K-12. Uh, Teresa Lovers at the higher education uh, level, uh, financial aid filings, FAFSA uh, down, and that translates uh, into enrollment and ultimately attainment uh, when it comes to education in, in Indiana. That's so true. I mean, that five to six percent number that you talked about for FAFSA being down is overall FAFSA. Well, if you're talking about the graduating high school class of 2021, it was down about 10 percent, wow. and for low-income students, down about 20 percent. And this is reflected in our college-going rate, which has dropped six percent in the last five years, from 65 to 59 percent. And again, as Katie has said, you know, we're seeing a disproportionate impact of COVID. Uh, for our low-income minority first-generation students, the impact has been even greater, more severe. Yeah, and that attainment issue that you've talked about uh, and we've talked about on the show with you uh, on a number of occasions, interesting in the, in the data as you look at uh, attainment at the height of the uh, disruption, unemployment uh, from COVID, Hoosiers with a bachelor's degree, uh, the unemployment rate was 5%. Uh, those with a high school diplo uh, diploma or equivalency was 13.5%. So the numbers paint, uh, paint the picture you're trying to illustrate. Well, and the, that disparity existed before, but during COVID it became even more glaring. Yep. So yes, absolutely, your level of education was determined in terms of whether or not you kept a job, lost a job or had opportunity for economic mobility. So we need to use this these last couple of years to really make sure that we're doubling down on our low income students. Katie, as you look going forward, K-12, this is obviously a fluid situation, but 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 what's next? How are you gonna use this data and, and continue to try to enhance the, the learning experience in this you know uncertain environment? So we certainly have to start with the data we have at a state level. Local schools also have data sets as well that they are using to really inform student learning ahead. We were fortunate enough to have our state general assembly provide about $150 million uh, for communities to come around and support our schools. Schools can't do it alone. It takes a full community working together. And then, um, you know, federally, we've received a lot of funding where schools are 
are really working yep. to get the greatest yep. return on investment for those dollars. Yeah, and very quickly, we'll only have about 20 seconds, uh, Teresa, but the fact that you two are together, K-12, higher education, I think is reflective of the fact that, that you really do work together when it comes to attainment and you know college credits in high school, all those, all those types of things. We're really encouraging students to get college credits when they're in high school. We know it saves them a lot of time and money. Uh, and so, yes, the Indiana College Corps is a way to get 30 credit hours and start college. And if you get that in high school, it can cost no more than $750. It's a good buy. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Teresa Lovers, the commissioner of the Indiana Commission for Higher Education, also Indiana Secretary of Education. Katie Jenner, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you.